Okay, so how to mill a decorative timber without a sawmill. I'm going to use a $50 Walmart iWorks electric chainsaw. That's just a 14 inch blade on there. Now the base on this log, if you see it here, is about oh, 16 inches. So it's going to take a little bit of work. First thing I do is I try to look for a nice straight edge. Seems like it's a nice flat top right here. So if I rolled that over a little bit, I'd have flat, a flat top. And when I go in the house, I want the mantle. It's going to be 80 inches long. I don't want it 12, 16 inches here and only 6 inches over at that end. I want to balance it out the best I can. So I take a look at this log and I kind of, if I look at it there, you see this end is real narrow and then it gets fat. So I keep looking around it until, ah, this branch that comes down here, well, that's about top to bottom, that's about nine inches wide. So what I did here was I'm going to use that as the side. That's the face that you're going to see. And then I started trimming this area off right here because you can see this was just so wide. I don't know if you can see that or not. That was just so wide right there. So we trimmed that off. Next thing I had to do was make a flat area for my scribe board to sit along. So I had to take that, notch that out, clean that off. I knocked that knot down a little bit and that knot a little bit. And you can see that it still has some space underneath of there. But it's mostly sitting flat. So this is my guide board, and I'm going to put it right along this edge to where I can just shave an inch off of the narrowest area here. But on that area over there, obviously I'm going to shave a lot more. What I want to do is keep, if it's going to be 8 inches here with that inch knocked off, then I want it to be about 8 inches here, the same 8 inches here with this large lump knocked off. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, let's nail it down. Looks pretty good down there. Now, if you look, I chose to nail it in just the two high spots because down here, it's just running wild down there. You see that? There's nowhere to nail it down there. But it's secure. When you nail it through those knots, just two little nails, it's pretty secure. And we're going to run it right down here. Cut straight down at a 90 degree. And what I'm, once I get it going, then I'm going to run it this way and I'm going to try to keep this saw right next to this guide board next to the guide board just keep it next to it and if i start to kind of hit the guide board on the top right here if i start to hit it on the top then i know i'm way at this angle and if i start scraping the bottom of the guide board then i know i've gone that far too that way too far so you can see how i'm cutting that in there nice and easy and I'm using the, basically a plunge cut. So I've got the tip inside there. And you just really don't want anything more than the weight of the saw and maybe the weight of your hand. Don't go pushing on it. You don't have to be a lumberjack. Take your time. It took about 20 seconds to do that much. It's going to take about five minutes to do the whole log. Just take your time. This is cheap equipment doing nice, expensive work. Okay, so you can see I've made it down with that plunge to where the tip is now coming through the bottom here. And I'm just taking my time down there. Okay. Okay, so the roll, log is now rolled on its face. 
And this is exactly how the mantle will sit with this side up. It's important that you want this level across here because you're going to hold it with your hand, the saw, and come level. And you see I've used the, uh, these little blocks. Let's see if I can get around here. See, I've used the uh, pieces I cut off with wedges. All right, now we'll stick the chainsaw in there and come across it. So I'm taking my time going through this thick part down here. And uh, I'm just kind of working a little bit this way, then working a little bit that way, working a little bit this way, working a little bit that way, trying to use the whole bar without getting the tip out from underneath the edge there. And just keeping it flat, working the, chain, the saw a little bit close to my body, but keeping myself away from the underside of the saw in case the chain pops. I'm also pulling it out every now and then and checking the tension on the blade, turning it up the right side and oiling it. So it's taking me about taking me about four or five minutes to get through this end of the, the heavy end of the board um, or the log. So the main thing is just take your time. People ask me, Dave, why aren't you using your your steel or your John Sered or your Husqvarna's? And you know, I've had them for almost 30 years and uh, I bought new ones about three years ago and I'm still having I spent a thousand dollars last year on saws and I'm just and I even have um, ripping chains um, now you have cross cut chains chisel tooth chain all kinds of different chains and I even have a couple of ripping chains and it's just for this little bit of work it's just not pulling it out tuning it up and having it all working for that um, and it gets if I don't have a, um, a regular aluminum mill, which I used to have but I don't have anymore, without that mill, man, that chainsaw can get so far ahead of you so quick. But with this little guy, it's easy little adjustments. It's a low speed. Just don't push the saw. Just don't push it. So, all right, we'll keep watching. Now, you notice I've left all this meat on here. That's a lot of weight sitting back here in that cut behind this blade, behind this bar. And you might be tempted to cut it off and relax that, but here's what happens when you do, is you now have no pressure to guide your bar and make small adjustments through the end of the log. So I leave that there and it folds just against, there's just enough pressure against the backside of this chain and the backside of this bar that, that it's not binding, um, it, it's just pressuring it enough to keep it nice and flat and it makes my work so much easier so don't be tempted to cut this off and try to relax the back of that don't worry about wedges or anything in the back just let it slightly close down on the saw as you come to the end it'll make that work so much cleaner Now you can see how I am keeping that chain to where it's just sitting across our guide, nice and clean. Of little adjustments. Let me see if I can get in here and show you what I'm talking about. You can see right here that it started to get a little bit high. The tip started to ride up a little bit, so I turned the saw a little bit, came down, came back into the meat let this part press down on the back of my bar here. And you can see how when it came back in, it cut just a little bit, a little bit lower right there. Right there. It's catching right in this corner down here. And that's keeping it nice and clean. Little adjustments like that up or down are easy when you're using an electric chainsaw. That's a beautiful piece of wood. You got just enough of the heartwood and just enough of the candium, the lighter colored woods that really make it uh, make it beautiful. Okay. 
Okay, so there's a true test right there. That's how straight our cut was. I'd say that's good enough for the girls we go with. Don't mean that in any bad way. Now we're going to take and turn it flat on this edge here. And we're going to work on the, getting our straightest edge right here. It really doesn't matter to me if one edge of the mantle is wider than the other as it sits on top. I want to get everything we can get out of it so that it's nice and clean. The one thing I do want to do is make sure that I get a nice clean edge. So you can see my shallowest point is right here. I want to get just enough to peel that bark. Take a look at it. It looks pretty good. I'm going to take a little bit more off the meaty side. There we go. And this is what it's going to look like from here. I'd say we did a pretty decent job cleaning it up. Still got this area over here that's a little thin, but that knot will help, and those two knots there will help a little bit. Questions? Let's try to answer a couple of questions I know you're going to ask. A um, couple things is, if your chain hops off of your bar, then you need to go back and read your manual because you're, you're, you're using the chainsaw wrong. You're going to hurt yourself severely. So go back to it. Now, I'm only saying this for those of you that don't know, but I mean, I've spent over 30 years on a chainsaw, so... Okay, so um, this little eye works. It's pretty cool. And it's got the self-tensioner right here. If the, if the chain gets a little loose, you just open it up half a turn, give it a shake or two, and then tighten it back up again. The other thing that will happen is about every 60 seconds, I'll push this three or four times. And, but it doesn't do a lot of good laying on its side. It really needs to stand up to oil it. So then uh, about every 90 Say every other time, I guess, every two minutes, I'll pull it out and turn it up and then push it until I get an oil trail on. I'll hold it off the wood here and then find where I have an oil trail. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When you hold it up like this, look down on that wood. The wood's dry, right? So I'm going to pump this a few times. And it should be coming out right there, but it's not. And the reason it's not is all that sawdust. So I just have a coat hanger. You can use a screwdriver or the tool that comes with it. And about every five minutes or so, I'll just go in here and clean this out. Once I expose that oil port right there, get my wire out of the way. And I'll pump it a few times, and you'll start to see the oil come out. See? Now you should see an oil trail. And that pump it till you do. You see the little oil splatters? On the wood, when you've got that going, you know you're oiling properly. The other thing is, is I check about every five minutes. I look down here and make sure that this oil level is getting lower. You should be able to visually see it get lower. And this should run out in about at least 15 minutes. It should be, you should have 15 minutes of use. It should be down here to minimum and you need to oil it again. Okay, so that's starting to look good. We've got this last little end here to clean off. And you notice I didn't strip off the bark. There's just no reason to work on all this bark unless you think that you've got a big rotted piece of wood that's going to matter. But this is all decorative, so we're, not really, we're going to leave it however it is. Um, when we pull the bark off, if it's a little soft in places, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to polyurethane it or use some wood hardener. So once we get it all trimmed out, then we'll uh, pull what's remaining bark off of it and sand it down. Okay, so now this part I'm just running the blade about an inch and a quarter away from the straight edge making another notch down about 
two inches and then I'll flip the board and I'll cut it out from this way and that'll make my groove that sits in the windowsill I'm not pulling a line you can use a skill saw you can do a chalk line you can do a straight edge whatever you want I've just done this so many times this is just pretty quick for me and I hold the chain at about that direction so that it's doing more of a rip instead of trying to work the tip to where it's going to have kickback and hit me in the face. We don't want that to happen. Of course, electric chainsaws really don't have much kickback. Beautiful. Okay, so I just want to look down here and make sure that this corner is cleaned out all the way down. Looks pretty good. If not, I'd either hit it with the tip of the chainsaw or chisel it just a little bit. Okay, so our window ledge is 69 and three quarters. This is about 83. We're gonna make our total about 75. We're gonna cut it at about 75 inches and then we're gonna notch it out. So I left a little lip right here so that it fits real tight to the faux stone. And do the same thing on the other side. Okay, at this point, we've just got all this to clean up. We can either use a hand planer or we could run it through a bench planer, but I'm just going to use some 40 grit sandpaper on a belt sander and knock it out cross grain. Once I get all the all the uh, saw marks out of it, then I'll run it, I'll sand with the grain. But you can really knock out some wood real fast with some 50 grit sandpaper if you're cutting cross grain with it. Okay, so we got our notch out for the window. We've sanded the corners, we rounded off the edges. Got all the saw marks out of here. We started out with this saw like this, or with this uh, sander like this, cutting it out, and then we cleaned it all up, coming back this way, taking any ripples out, any sanding marks. There's no reason to sand any finer than that, unless you're looking for furniture finish. Okay, so the next thing is is flip it over and take his bark off. Finally, take the bark off. And then we'll use our orbital sander. Okay, so for those tough spots, I'm just used I'm just use this guy right here. A little sharp machete. You can't do it with two hands. So I take two hands and I pull it back like this one on each side and just peel it. And don't go chopping at it. Just peel it back. And then you can scrape. Scrape with it standing straight up on the edge. Just kind of clean it up. When I'm done with that, you're going to take this guy with, again, with 60 grit. 3M 60 grit does most of its cutting in the first five minutes. So after like five, six minutes, I'm going to change that pad out. All right, now that we have it debarked, we need to sand these notch down to where they look pretty. You see these little lumps right there? That's it. That's pretty. Sand these down. That's it, just sand them down until they start to sparkle. Okay, there's one here. We're gonna, it's one you're gonna see when you sit on the sofa. We're gonna cut it down so every one of those little grooves are gone in there. The saw cuts make it sweet.
pretty good. And what we're doing is making it nice and flat. Okay, so there's some more all along there. I'm going to hit every one of them the same way. Take your time, make them flat, cut them till they're beautiful. There's one kind of messed up. So every one of them become an accent. These are all going to be accent pieces. So we're going to clean them up real nice until they look pretty. Even the little ones like this, like that. Again, make them flat. All right, so they all look pretty good. Now when we hit that with uh, polyurethane, it's really gonna make it, or marine spar varnish is gonna make it look great. How we did these little eyes was, I just used this part right here. Just kind of rocked it in there a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna hit it with our foam sander. Okay, there's our first fitting. Looks pretty good. Oh. Yep. So I just shot a couple trim nails in here. I'm going to drill some pilot holes here, 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 and here, about four of them, put some five inch screws into that window sill. We could finish this out right here, but all I'm gonna do is drop a piece of three-quarter cedar down in there and it's gonna be a little groove. Um, I don't wanna make it flat or it'll cover up this edge of the glass. You can see that one over there. So we're gonna basically run our marine spar varnish on there and get these nice pretty colors.